So let's begin to do the Tunisian purl stitch. Now the purl is actually a little bit awkward to start with. So I'm just gonna show you this. So when we did the simple stitch we came in front and we grabbed the yarn and we just did this. Okay? So we just came in the front. But do you see where this yarn is? It's coming out toward the back and we just kinda loop around. No big deal. Just like this. Okay? And so you can see that it's returning back to the simple stitch even though we were just doing the Tunisian knitting a few moments ago. So what you need to pay attention to is that the purl stitch is slightly different. So what we're going to do is just back out. See how easy it is? So if you're screwing up in knitting um, it's really hard to fix your errors. You do it in Tunisian really easy. So what we wanna do before we start doing the purl is that we have to move the strand in front. Okay? So the strand is in front and we have to access this vertical uh, strand. So we still are playing within these strands but the yarn has to be moved forward before we go into that stitch. So I have my own technique but it's in front now. And then you insert your hook in. So you can see that the yarn strand is coming out between the hook okay and down and then we grab the yarn and pull through. And you can kinda see that it's kinda looped around this particular strand. So now that the string is now in front it's just easier to do the remaining of the purls. So what I just do is that I move the hook down and did you see how I just did that? I just didn't jump over that, that strand. Okay? So I just didn't go like this because if I do that it's gonna move it back to being a, a regular simple stitch which is fine if you're looking for that in your particular pattern. But to maintain the purl stitch this string needs to remain down in front. So you can either just pull forward like this and insert your hook Okay? So the strand is coming up underneath. You wrap it around your hook and pull through. You can do that but it's very time consuming. So what I do is that when I go to insert into the post or into the strand here. I, so what I just do is that I move the hook and then I just make sure this yarn is in front. Okay? So that means that it will now be still coming underneath and then I wrap. And what I just do is uh, consciously or unconsciously I'm not sure. I use my finger and I pinch because if it's too tight in the back here it's gonna be hard to pull through. So I just kinda pinch so it doesn't pull any more extra um, yarn and it's just easier. Okay? So you can either move it forward first, insert into the strand, then wrap the hook or you can be lazy like me and just move it so that the hook is behind that strand then go in, see and it's still there and pull through. Okay, so just moving it in front. So I'm not looping it or anything. I'm just making sure my hook is in the right position and I'm just doing this. Okay? And what this is doing is creating a purl. Now it's still creating your vertical strings to play with so it doesn't change any of that, that fact at all and uh, it makes it really kind of easy to follow. So either you can either move it forward manually and then wrap or just do it with the slight motion of your hook. The end is still always the same like we've done before again into the chain stitch. So there should be two strings pulling it through. So to go backward it's still the same thing. It's just chain one okay through the first loop and then just pulling it through two. Okay? And this changes the look of your particular stitch. So what we're doing is that in the future tutorials coming up is that we're gonna be mixing and matching um, our stitches that we're just learning today to be able to do a final project. So let's review this again. So we're gonna start off and you have to move that yarn forward. So what I just do is just I move my hook so it's, it brings that yarn underneath on its own and then I wrap and pull through. It's not lazy, it's sensible because nobody has time to waste on steps that you don't really need to do. So you see how I'm just kinda pinching that? It just makes it a lot easier. So I just pinch and hold. Because if you don't pinch it I find it just adds too much extra tension to be able to fight with and so it just get your thumb just ready to pinch. So this is the Tunisian purl stitch. So what we're going to do is that I'm gonna show you how to cast off because we've talked about uh, you know the picket fence in the very beginning of this particular stitch 
uh, part of this tutorial and basically it leaves a hole in your work if you go to finish it on the other side. So let's uh, just get in our, our final here that's a chain stitch and let's come all the way back. Okay, so let's just verify there's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If there wasn't 10 I'd be in trouble right now but there's still 10 it's okay. We're gonna just yarn over and pull through the first one and then yarn over and pull through two. So you're going to see that it's like a picket fence. You're gonna be able to see through this particular row. So we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to cast off in just a moment. Okay, so you can't just finish right now because you'll end up on the, on the edge that has these massive holes in it unless that's the look you're going for but then it's not consistent with the other side that is completely filled in. So let me show you how to cast off next. <laughs> 